And now I would like to uh, invite uh, Director Clarence Carter of the Office of Family Assistance to introduce himself and to, to give some opening remarks. Clarence, I'm passing the mic to you. Uh, Julie, thanks so much. And it is my pleasure to be here with all of you today. Um, I, I think that this is the first time that um, we have had an opportunity to be together since I think 2019 um, be, because of our uh, um, <clears throat> uninvited house guests, this um, coronavirus. Um, what, what we are going to do in the time that um, we have together today, I wanna share some, some, some insights. But before I, I get into um, my, my formal um, presentation, I wanna first say, um, Re Rebecca, you have nothing to ask for forgiveness for. Your, your, your blessing was, um, it was warm, gracious, appropriate and dignified. And I think that um, Chairman uh, uh, Tilford at Denver would um, be most appreciative that you stood in his stead today. So thank you for, um, for, for stepping up. Um, just a couple of other acknowledgements. So uh, Stan Calstall and Denise Edwards um, so ably head our tribal TANF um, operation in addition to some other OFA responsibilities. And um, I just want to acknowledge um, that they have been wildly uh, um, supportive and helpful during my, uh, my, 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 my tenure in this work. And I am most appreciative of their, um, of their guidance, leadership and, and support. And um, also um, uh, <clears throat> uh, Steve McLean and BLH, who has been our technical assistance partner um, through all aspects of the administration, the Office of Family Assistance. And they have been vital uh, partners in this effort. You know, um, people in positions like mine get to just show up and pontificate. But um, in, in order for there to be something to show up and pontificate too, there's an awful lot of work that has to go on behind the scenes. And um, our team at the Office of Family Assistance and, um, and also BLH has been most supportive and uh, we're, we're most thankful for that. And my final acknowledgement is to Julie Fong. Uh, <clears throat> Julie is a, um, I, I would say a quiet, warm force of nature for the, um, the, the, the time that I have known Julie, she has been an amazing advocate for this program and tribal communities. And um, what I so admire is, um, <clears throat> it, it is, I, I wear all of my emotions on my sleeve. I am, I can be very histrionic, you know, hands, you know, voice, um, inflections and you never get that from Julie. You just get that quiet, steady knowledge and experience. But it is so clear that the passion is a part of that. And so Julie, I have uh, appreciated very much your, um, your, your, your program leadership from the, from the, the far west. <clears throat> So, so folks, let me, um, I wanna share a, a, a couple of things um, with you. Um, <clears throat> there is a, a, a Chinese proverb that I am reminded of in this moment. It goes something like, um, may you live in interesting times. Well, um, I think for all of us, that proverb has been fulfilled. Um, interesting times to say the least. As I said, this uninvited dinner guest, COVID-19, 
has completely reshaped the landscape for all that we do um, and how we are impacted. So, so um, I, I wanna thank each and every one of you for your dogged continuing to serve those that so desperately need the vital supports that our programs and their partners provide. You know, um, COVID-19 has um, unearthed some very unpleasant realities in our society. Now, I don't have to tell any of you that one of those realities is the challenge our society has in serving those individuals and families who are economically, socially, and developmentally vulnerable. Um, it has been a, a quiet but dirty little secret of our American society. And that has been blown open um, in the context of this virus. And so I wanna thank you for being on the front lines of this work and not shying away from it, even as you had to tend to the, the health and well being of your own families, communities. So, if, if I could, I wanna share with you uh, for a few minutes the big picture of what, what we have been working on in the Office of Family Assistance. When I, when I arrived, at OFA three and a half years ago, I brought the leadership team together and I said, um, <clears throat> that in a conversation that I had with the uh, previous Secretary of Health and Human Services, Tom Price, during the vetting process, um, I said that I would be honored to administer the Office of Family Assistance if I didn't have to only focus on the administration of the programs that are part of the OFA suite. That the thing that was important to me is remaking the American safety net or laying out a framework to remake the American safety net. And so um, the, the secretary asked me to explain that in a little more depth and I, and I explained to him that as it is currently constituted in design and operation, the American safety net is not focused on growing people beyond the vulnerability that has them need the vital supports of the safety net. It is simply focused and operates on delivering those benefits, goods and services as long as the individual or family meets the criterion to receive those benefits, goods and services and that, that, <clears throat> and that there is reserve to do so. And I believe that we ought to be as intentional about not only meeting the crisis of cash assistance or or, or, or food or housing or healthcare or what have you. But after we meet that crisis, then we should join with those we serve to help them grow beyond the need for that kind of intervention in their life. And so the secretary agreed with that. And, um, and so we set out, uh, um, I, I said to my team, I, I really need you folks to focus on making the trains run on time, ensuring that what we are statutorily responsible for doing, you make sure that those things happen. And I have to tell you that um, my entire team at OFA has been so wonderful in doing that. And um, I'll pause for just a bit of an apology. And Julie mentioned this up top. But um, 
I have a very boisterous associate. Um, he is a four and a half pound Yorkshire Terrier who just yells all the time. And um, he is, um, so he likes to be involved in these things. So if, if you hear him yelling, uh, my apologies in advance. Um, so so, so the, the team has supported me in two ways. One, in ensuring that the trains run on time, ensuring that the, the, the things that, the, 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 the funding, the rules, those things that make our programs uh, um, happen every day, that those things are happening. But then they've also supported me in trying to vend and, and shape this vision of remaking the safety net. And so folks, the headlines behind this vision, as I said just a couple of minutes ago, is that the safety net ought not only address the immediate crisis, it ought to bring together benefits, goods, and services in a comprehensive way to help that individual or family grow beyond the vulnerability that has them need these vital supports. Now, folks, here's what's really important to me in this. It is absolutely our objective in this approach that we ultimately reduce the, the public support roles. But here's what's important in that reduction. That reduction needs to be a matter of us addressing the need that that individual or family had that made them reach out for the service. Not reducing the roles by timing someone out or sanctioning them out or, or not serving them, but by addressing the need so that, that we have helped them build their capacity so then they don't need these life-sustaining benefits, goods, and services. And so that, that has been a pretty dramatic change for our emphasis in the safety net. And what I had asked is, could the TANF program lead that reframing? And that is exactly what we have focused on um, during this past three and a half years. And I think that we have been um, successful in developing the framework and creating a foundation for this work to move forward. And folks, I wanna um, make, make a, an important point in this. Please know that it is not our suggestion for an instant that we ought to reduce the public supports. It is so vital in a community that, um, that a, I'll just take this example, that a food bank is available, okay? Because there are always people amongst us who are going to have that vital need that they're not able for a time to meet that need on their own. So we always want to have a, 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 a well-stocked and available food bank. But what we don't want is the same individual or family having to use that food bank for a lifetime or in some instances, generations. We have failed if that's the instance. It needs to be there for everybody, but it needs to be a temporary support because we have helped that individual or family grow beyond the need for it. I like to say that the safety net should be a mile marker in a life's journey, not a destination unto itself. And so that has been the emphasis that we have had um, during my tenure here at the Office of Family Assistance. And I am, I'm comforted that we have been able to embed this thinking 
into the, the Office of Family Assistance and all of our support structures, so, uh, such as our TANF program and Healthy Marriage and Responsible Fatherhood and Health Professions Opportunities Grants and other programs and other agency, uh, the other agency I administer, so that this work can carry on um, as I move on to my next chapter. And that brings me to where I wanted to, um, to, to close up. Um, I, I will shortly be moving on to uh, my, next, my next chapter. I have had the blessing and good fortune of being in the public sector, in the administration of safety net programs and agencies, I have served um, now two presidents, four governors and a mayor in these pursuits. And um, these insights that I have shared with you have been developed over my 30 years in doing this work. Well, um, the, the work needs to continue. And um, in my next chapter, I will be continuing to move this work forward. And I see that happening in partnership with our our TANF enterprise, if you will. And so I, I wanna bring this part to a close by saying thank you to each and every one of you for your dedication and doing the work of the angels in serving those that are economically, socially, and developmentally vulnerable in, in, in our society. Um, <clears throat> This is, I know that this is sometimes thankless and really um, overwhelming work. And especially when you throw in a little pandemic in the midst of that. But I would ask you to restore yourselves as you need to. Keep on fighting the good fight and everybody be safe and be well, and just know that there are people that will never know your name or your face, but you will have helped them in making their life work. And so I wanna thank each and every one of you for the honor and privilege it has been um, to work with you. And I trust that we will have the opportunity to see and work together as we, um, uh, as I, as I enter the next chapter of, of my journey. And so, with that, um, I want to stop um, with my yada yada and ask uh, if, if there's any questions, comments, stuff you want to yell about. I'm happy to try to tackle it. With that, I'm going to turn it back to Julie. Thank you so much, Clarence. So we're gonna open up the, the floor if um, anyone has a question or anything they'd like to put on Clarence's um, radar. You can uh, type it in the chat if you'd like or um, let Steve know, Steve McLean know through the chat that you would you have a comment and he'll unmute you. We'll wait a couple more minutes. I see I see one comment from Torres Martinez. I love that Mr. Carter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's uh, appreciate that. So, so, um, so, 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 Julie, if if, um, if if nobody has um, any questions or comments, we are uh, probably running just a hair behind, and um, it will give us an opportunity to get caught up. I think that um, the team has a rich and compelling um, couple of days planned, and that this will certainly um, help you frame how it is that your uh, programs and initiatives 
will will work to support um, your communities. And um, with that, I, I'm going to say again, um, uh, thanks so much, and um, blessings. And please, everybody, be safe and be well, and um, have a happy, healthy, and prosperous holiday season. Thanks so much. And um, Julie, the room is yours. Clarence, thank you so much. Not quite as elegant, eloquent as you are, but thank you very, very much from the bottoms Absolutely. of our hearts. Thank you.